Welcome, 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 you guys. It is your girl, Brown Skin Exoticals. I'm back with another video for you guys, and I hope y'all will enjoy it this Monday evening or whenever you watch it. So I will be referring to the seven mountains of culture in today's video, which does come from a Christian sermon. I am not trying to force my religion on anyone. If you do have questions about my religion that you'd love to ask me, you are free to email me in my email, which you guys should know by now. But I will be referring to 15 tips because on the poll the other day, y'all asked for practical tips for mixed and light skinned people. And I'll, of course, deliver. So these tips I'm going to give you, these 15 tips, are going to have to do with one, if not several, of these quote unquote mountains of culture. So that being said, tip number one is mixed and light-skinned women, mixed and light-skinned men, of course, but women have a harder time than men, if I'm being honest with this, and that's putting people in categories. This whole feeling like everybody should be able to have access to you will be our downfall if we're not careful. We need to understand the art of placing friends, family members, colleagues, workers in different categories in our life based on how they accept and respect us as mixed and light-skinned women. Part of your identity, part of your experience as an exotical, as a mixed woman, is your appearance and your phenotype. If a person does not have good intentions for you, and sadly that person is a family member, a dark-skinned cousin, a dark-skinned mother, dark-skinned father even, you have to learn how to get healthy space to that individual and I want us to be able to perfect that to the point where it's like oh she's that bougie light-skinned girl she's that boozy mixed girl take it as a compliment because that means you're not letting people into your energy regardless of whether those people are your parents abuser and is an abuser and you don't need to give them any access to you the number one thing is your health especially your mental health now, this comment I saw the other day has a lot to do with the image I just saw and one thing I've been noticing a lot with mixed and light-skinned women, and that's the amount of mixed and light-skinned or brown-skinned exotical women who will date, procreate, or tolerate dark-skinned black men who objectify, sexualize us, don't want any good for us. They just want to have kids that kind of look like us or just have the ego boost, if you will, of getting that pretty light-skinned girl, that pretty mixed girl. And... Here's the thing, they already do this enough with dark skinned black women where they'll have babies outside of marriage and then abandon the woman and child. I do not need that happening to mixed women. And if that has happened to you thus far, I am not bashing you. I'm not saying that you're less than. All I am saying is for the collective of mixed and light skinned women, I do not want us to fall weary into thinking and taking on the Blackistan mentality that we can only pull dusty black men because we can have any race of men we want. Number two, I need us as mixed and light-skinned people to know our history, and especially as mixed race and exotical people. Excuse the noise y'all hear in the background, I'm sorry. But we will have people all the time try to gaslight us and make us feel that we've done nothing in history and that we have not contributed to society and that is false. The main reason why people don't know quote unquote mixed inventors and mixed teachers and mixed surgeons and doctors is because of the simple fact they've been thrown into the black community. The black community knows this. That's why they will push us in and out of blackness. Our accomplishments make them look good as they sit down and do nothing. Majority of the civil rights movement and all the other social movements have included or been the backbone of mixed and light skinned people, regardless of whether you're in the Americas, Africa, Caribbean, wherever. They know this and they get upset when we know it too. Number three, know the facts about our abuse as mixed and light skinned people and how much our population is growing. A lot of people like to make it seem as though monoracials are just a super small group in America, but that's not the case. A lot of people, especially due to all these divesters and swirlers, have a lot of mixed race children, and we should be able to know the facts about our own community. And even before swirling and divestment, mixed and light-skinned people have always been around, even back into before the slavery days, because races have children with other races and other ethnicities. It's just how it happens. And number four is a personal question, and I want you to be honest with this self-evaluation. What insecurities do you have that you find yourself 
op we're compensating for now or what do you overcompensate in because you are objectified over sexualized etc for example with me i had a lot of white teachers who did not understand white friends as well who didn't understand curly hair and when they would see my curly hair they would always say it looks short and it would make me feel insecure in my hair to the point where now I'll have times where I just grow on these tangents where I feel like I need to grow my hair long because it looks too short or it looks like a bush quote unquote so to speak and I'll also have dark skinned black women who will be jealous of my hair type despite my own insecurities of it at times and they will shove their hands in my scalp to feel if it's real ask me for hair growth tips demand that they know what I mix with things of that nature and that can really take tolls on our mental health as women now the next question is another self-evaluation question and that is what races and or ethnicities do you feel the most comfortable around for me that would be Caribbean West Indian people Latinas and certain white people who have these type of people in their families so they're a bit more acquiesce to the culture if you will and if you ever stop to think about it i've noticed with me personally the races or ethnicities you feel the most comfortable around tend to be the people you a date and or procreate with and these are the people who made you feel the most love so if a mixed girl felt the most accepted and valued and appreciated by the black community she's probably going to marry or have children with a black man now, that is not necessarily a good or bad thing. I just want us to be able to be self-aware and be able to reflect and be honest with ourselves and not just say, oh, I just do things because I want us to be able to know where we are and know where we're going so that no one can tell us otherwise. Now, the next tip, tip number six, is understand that as a mixed and light-skinned person, a biracial and exotical, your existence your very existence is controversial and you always have to be on guard of two people. Self-hating mixed and light-skinned people and ignorant monoracials have discernment when you're out and about, even have discernment of the people who you let in your life, which ties into a previous tip I've mentioned. But I've noticed the amount of mixed and light-skinned people who will throw other exoticals and mixed race and biracial people under the bus saying, oh, you calling yourself biracial, you want to be white, you want to be white, you the white man's baby, you're a self-hater, you're a coon. And they will do as much, if not more damage than the racist white or racist black people or whatever races you mix with have encountered who will make you feel less than or subhuman just for being mixed and exotical obviously we don't need these people's validation and hopefully you don't crave it anymore or long for it but you still understand where you are and how you are viewed by these people if that makes sense now the seventh thing and this has to do with two mountains this has to do with the mountain of media and entertainment and the mountain of religion or spirituality if you will now, whether you are like this woman who is, um, I'm assuming, a witch. Now, obviously, I understand there's a difference between being spiritual and being a witch. But the spiritual, witchy, new age type community pedestalizes and they do favor light-skinned women. And I've noticed that before. And even if you are like myself, who's a Christian woman, especially in the South, Light-skinned women, mixed women, they're the pastor's wives. They're leading the praise teams. They're affluent members of the church community, which is, again, people paying their exotical tax. But I'm just saying, as you're being pedestalized in these communities, both media and spiritual and religion-wise, use it to your advantage. You're in the spotlight. Shine where you are. Make sure that you're making that space comfortable for fellow exoticals and mixed people. And... This tip number eight here, I want us mixed and light-skinned women to become masters of this. And I've seen certain mixed and light-skinned women who I could name, such as the rapper Mulatto, who now calls herself Lotto, who fits, quote, the whore, excuse my language, part of the Madonna whore complex. And the Madonna whore complex is a belief, a psychology um ideology which is showing how women are either seen as quote the side chick versus madonna who's the main chick i want us to be able to balance both aspects of self and there's multiple personality tests 
online and there's different ways for you to learn what are your quote unquote whore qualities and what are your Madonna care qualities. As mixed and light skinned women, we don't need to go to a YouTuber or anyone else to learn about our femininity, but being able to know your power and hone it and focus that energy makes you a force to be reckoned with. Tip number nine, which again goes into the last tip, is learning how to play with people's emotions. Women of all races and all phenotypes will see you as a threat because you are the best of all the worlds. You're the best of both races, both ethnicities, whatever you happen to be mixed with. I want us as mixed and light-skinned women, of course, including mixed and light-skinned men, but these tips are gearing a little bit more towards the women, so I'm sorry, guys. But I want us to be able to know how to play on the emotions of others. Yeah, that sounds like manipulating. That basically is manipulating, but... It's playing the game of chess and knowing how to lose the battle to win the war, knowing how to make yourself look like the victim in workplaces, know how to have the pity of your boss in your favor work out for you when that mean dark skinned girl is bullying you, wink wink, things of that nature, if you get my drift. Now, the tip number 10 is another self-evaluation question, as well as a way for us to correct other exoticals and mixed people who do this. And this is identify all the ways you contribute to the harassment and abuse of mixed and light-skinned people. When you see mixed and light-skinned people being belittled because they choose to identify themselves as mixed and light-skinned, whether that's on the internet or in real life, why are you calling yourself mixed? Why is everything got to be about race? There's only one race, that's the human race. Do you sit back and say nothing as these people tear another mixed and light-skinned person? Or do you stand up and say, no, white get people, black people, other races get to be proud of their culture and their race and ethnicity? We as mixed-race people get to do the same. We have to make sure that we're not quiet when we should be talking the loudest. And you see that especially with groups like the black community, which have startled other races so much so to the point where they don't even want to attack or even hold these people accountable for their actions anymore. I'm not saying we have to go that far, but we do need to stick together. Tip number 11 and this is starting as well as supporting local mixed and light skin businesses. Again, when we label our stuff, when we label our craft, our accomplishments as a mixed accomplishment, I'm a mixed woman, I'm a biracial woman, I'm an exotical woman, things of that nature. And when we support other people like our own men or women as mixed and light skin people and exoticals, we do better and we build a name and a reputation for ourselves. Now that's low supporting local business and your other mixed and exotical people, as well as supporting and loving mixed and light skin celebrities. So I don't wanna see any biracials, multiracials, brown skin exoticals bashing other rappers, especially people like Logic, who people know him for being so proudly mixed and it bothers a lot of people. Now, speaking about the media, I've realized that when you take control, we need to take control of the media being pushed out against us. For example, I've seen how black women were able to sign petitions and sign and write emails and get the show Mixed Ish canceled. Imagine if mixed people as a collective group were able to come together and literally cancel shows or just get it out there that hey you cannot push the stereotype of the quote-unquote racially confused mixed person out on the tv you can't push the narrative of mixed and light-skinned women being insecure as you also as well as you cannot push out the narrative of mixed and light-skinned men being insecure or feminine or struggling in their masculinity and in their manhood when we take our narrative and we take our image on the media seriously then we get it treated seriously and there are other races such as white people who will fluff and over exaggerate for the sake of their narrative and their image in the media and it helps it works wonders tip number 13 is learn how politics and politicians affect current and future generations of mixed and exotical people. Now, I know anytime you talk about politics, people clutch their pearls. I'm not telling you which party to be in. I'm telling you to vote for what's best for mixed and light-skinned people regardless, along with your personal beliefs on certain issues. 
So things like acknowledging important biracial and mixed race people in history, acknowledging that that is not a black person, that is a mixed person, saying no, this person should not be talked about during Black History Month. This person needs to be acknowledged for what they are, which is mixed. Having a open voice in your children's or nieces or nephews education being on pto parents conferences and obviously i understand that at first this will just be one of those things people will try to sweep under the rug but if we get loud enough there will be change that comes out of this and obviously i want this to be a extra tip which is tip number 14 for my quote unquote black passing or white passing or my basically my you're not that mixed looking mixed people identify yourself as mixed regardless of what people see you as because when you quote unquote contradict yourself which is basically you just accepting all races and ethnicities of yourself and you accept who you are they're gonna say oh you're contradicting yourself oh you were white today and now you're black today and then things of that nature be okay accepting that you are your own version of mix and that you don't need to look like the light skin girl with curly hair and hazel eyes. You are a beautiful mixed woman, whether you have dark skin, light skin, straight hair, kinky hair, whatever you look like, you are beautiful and mixed and you should be proud in that fact. And my last, and I would argue my most important tip for us as mixed and light skin people, men or women, is to prioritize your joy and your love for yourself in your life. You are the most attractive when you are living your life with a passion, when you are happy, when you're not letting the haters ruin your energy and drag your spirit down. We understand, again, that our existence as mixed and light-skinned people is controversial and that there's a lot of people gunning for our top spot and who are threatened by us. But that should make you want to love yourself all the more. For every hater you have, love yourself double is what I like to say because we deserve it. And even if you can't find that love in your friends and family or the people who should love you, which is sad, but happens to be a lot of people's reality, then love yourself, especially for my exoticals and mixed and light-skinned people who have friends and family members who are not supportive in loving them as the mixed and light-skinned person that they are. Invest in being in communities like this one where your self-love, your mental health is prioritized. Have conversations with other mixed and light-skinned people who get it. Talk, cry, seek out your own healing. I want us to be able to flourish as mixed and light-skinned people, especially because the spotlight's always on us. There's pressure, but when it comes to pressure, you can either rise to the occasion or you can crumble. And I want to see us rise above and beyond everyone else's expectations of us.